Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm a British journalist who's been living and working in the Mollies for the past five years. Behind the camera, here is my wife, Naj. She's a Maldivian photographer from Adu Atoll, which is in the country's far south. Now, we wanted to make this video today to tell you about our blog, 2000hours.com, about the work we've been doing and about the work we intend to do. Now, to do that, we thought we'd bring you to a beach, because the Maldives is famous for its beaches, and more than 1.2 million people a year come to the Maldives primarily for these beaches, although most of them, they don't come to islands like this. An inhabited island, they, they'll go quickly from the airport to one of the country's 115 single island luxury resorts. Now, these resorts are what have basically put the country on the map for the majority of people over the past 40 years. But well, Maldivians have been living in these islands for two millennia. So, while well, the country is now synonymous with this luxury brand, there's a lot more to the Maldives than that. So what we're aiming to do with our website, through photojournalism and, and travel blogging, is to take you to see another side of the Maldives. So, let's go. So behind me here, you can see the capital, the capital island of the Maldives, Mali. That's home to around a third of the country's 400,000 strong population, and it's now notorious as one of the most densely populated islands on the planet. Now, when it comes to coverage of the Maldives, most stories that aren't about the resort islands are about Mali and its uh, interesting politics. So what we're hoping to do with 2000 Hours is to bring coverage and stories from all 187 inhabited islands in the Maldives and many of the 900 odd uninhabited islands. So, I mean, we feel there's a, a large gap between what's considered news for the global media and PR for the tourism industry. And we want to find out Maldives that exist in between the headlines and the holidays. So the website, it's not going to be doing current affairs, it's not going to be doing tourism. It's going to be doing both of these things and neither of these things all at the same time. Now, the tagline, if you like, of the website is, is rediscovering Maldives. And this indicates that a lot of what we cover and document is going to be covering old ground for many people. Well, we hope to do it in a new and interesting way and bring it to a new audience. And on top of that, we know that there's so many stories out there that have never been documented, things that have never been captured before, on, on film in particular, and um, we intend to go and get those stories. Now, this is by no means uncharted territory. There's been a lot of great writers that have come to the Maldives uh, voluntarily and involuntarily over the past few centuries. I'm thinking about people like uh, A.C.P. Bell, 100 years ago, uh, Clarence Maloney in the 1970s, Xavier Romero Frias, lived here in the 80s and 90s, and a lot of other great writers that we've already tried to reference in some of the work we've been doing. Now, another aim of the website is to take this small but, but excellent body of work from these academics and explorers and, and bring that to a new audience by essentially standing on their shoulders and seeing what we can see today through Natchez's camera and using my words. Now, a photojournalism project like this, as far as we know, has not been uh, attempted in the Maldives before, but we see a series of escalating threats to traditional island life and uh, culture, not least the, the uncertainties of a changing climate and rapid migration to the capital, Mali. So it's not clear how long these stories are going to be there. So we want to go out there and celebrate them and share them while we still can. And if all that wasn't enough, the guest house uh, tourism industry has been booming in the last five or six years, which means people can now come to islands like this and see the real Maldives, if you like, in a way that was basically impossible just 10 years ago. So before we finish, we wanted to talk about why we chose 2000 Hours as the name for the blog, when anybody who's Googled the Maldives or knows anything about the Maldives knows that there's uh, 1,192 islands in the country, give or take a few sandbags. Now, first of all, the name is a nod to one of the authors from the last century, a guy called T.W. Hockley, who came here at a time when it, the final count wasn't really in and they hadn't really agreed on how many islands there were in the country. And we wanted to use that name because we feel it, it continues to symbolize the, the mystery that endures across much of the country and, and the idea that there's so many stories out there that we don't know about that haven't been documented properly. 
So before we go, before we leave Khafu Vilingiri, we are roughly now in the middle of the Maldives' 26 natural coral atolls. We are 1,700 miles south of Delhi, 2,100 miles west of Singapore, 5,400 miles southeast of my hometown, Crewe, in England, but directly on top of a lot of incredible stories. I mean, even in Sundoli itself, uh, that I'm sitting on this traditional Maldivian swing, this has a very famous former owner and an incredible story of its own, but to hear that story, you're going to have to subscribe to this YouTube channel, to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and to visit www.2000hours.com. So, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in the islands.